In this video, I want to discuss dihedral groups and how they relate to symmetries of different shapes. Let's start by considering a triangle. And let's suppose that on this triangle, I want to do a one-third turn. So I want to rotate this one-third of the way, and we'll say we're going to rotate it clockwise. And when we do that, we just get another equilateral triangle. We can't see that, every, that anything has changed. So this would be a symmetry. If I were to label these vertices as 1, 2, and 3, and then I want to rotate this around one-third of the way clockwise. Vertex 1 moves here. 3 moves over here, and then two would move to the top. So by labeling the vertices, we can see that the one-third turn clockwise is a symmetry, and we can see how it has changed this triangle. Let's suppose we do another one-third turn clockwise. When we do, we once again get the triangle. The one will move over here to this vertex. Three moves up to the top, and two moves down. So now I have three different triangles with vertices labeled as we have. If we tried to do one more third of the way turn, we would once again have our triangle. One would move up to the top, three moves down to the right, and two would move over to the left. So we're back to where we started. So I'm going to call this rotation R. So I'm going to call a one-third turn R1 and a two-thirds turn R2 and then all the way around. So we'll say zero turn, getting back to where I started or just leaving it the way it is. I'm going to call that R0. And this set here does form a group. So let's look at this a little bit more. So here I have my three elements, my zero turn, my one third turn, and my two third turn. We can see that if I do a one third turn and then a two thirds turn, that will get me back to where I started. So our zero is our identity. This is where we don't change the shape at all. Similarly, we have that R2, R1 is equal to zero, or R0. So we do have an identity and we do have inverses. R1 and R2 are inverses of each other. We also know that rotating around one third and then another one third would be two thirds. So we could form a group table and let's go ahead and look at that. To investigate this group a little bit more. So this one would be the rotational group of the triangle. We know our zero is the identity, so our zero times our zero is our zero, our zero R1 is R1, and our zero R2 is R2. R1, R0, so we rotate around one third and then leave it alone. That would be R1. Rotating around one third and then another one third, that would be R2, two thirds. And then rotating around one third and then two thirds is the same thing as rotating a full turn, which would bring us back to where we started. R2, R0 would be R2. We would rotate two thirds of the way around and then leave it alone. R2, R1, we would rotate around two thirds and then one third. That gets us back to where we started. And then R2, R2, that would give me a full rotation of four thirds. So, if I think of just my vertices, rotating around twice puts my one here, my two here, and my three at the top. Rotating around twice again for another R2, that would move one down at the bottom, two at the top, and three down here, and that's the same thing as an R1 turn. And there's nothing unique about triangles. We could do the same thing with a square. So we have one, two, three, and four for our vertices. In our zero turn, 
would leave everything where it is since this is our identity. Next, we'll look at an R1 turn. In triangles, R1 might rotate around one-third of the way, but in squares, they'll be one-fourth of the way since we have four vertices here. So now one moves over here, two will move down, three moves to the left, and four moves up. The next one is an R2 turn, which will be a two-fourths turn or half turn. We now move one down, two to the left, three up, and four to the right. And finally, we also have one more for the square, R3, a three-fourths turn. That would move one down to the left, two up, three over to the right, and four down and to the right. And then rotating around one more time would give us back to where we started. So in general, however many vertices we have or whatever our rotational symmetry is, in this case, we have a, four, a degree four rotational symmetry, that tells me how many of these are elements that we have. And this does form a cyclic group of rotations. In general, no matter what shape we start with, R1 will generate the entire group. And this cyclic group is generated by R1. No matter what shape I start with or what degree of symmetry I start with, R1 will always generate the cyclic group of rotations. This generator may not be unique. There may be other things that generate this group of rotations, but R1 does guarantee that it'll work no matter what shape you start with.